We are in the middle of a transformation to a clean energy economy. And that's happening at the industry level, it's happening at the power plant level, but it also needs to happen at the homeowner level. Well, Monday is Earth Day, and all month we've been talking about ways to sustain the planet. Our next guest has written a book hot off the presses for people wanting to make their home greener, especially if you are building or possibly remodeling. Building a sustainable home is like a guidebook for anyone looking to not only benefit the earth, but your own health, wealth, and soul. It's a beautiful book, and we're happy to welcome the author, Melissa Rappaport Schiffman. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thanks for coming in on this Saturday morning, Earth Day on Monday, but I know that uh, for you and for many of us, it should be Earth Day every day, right? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and this is a gorgeous book. I have had a chance to read a couple of the chapters. I was paging through it. Why did you want to write this book? Well, I wanted to write the book for several reasons. Um, you have to know a little bit more about my story to understand kind of the background. I worked on Capitol Hill for former Congressman Jim Ramstead in energy and environment policy. So that was sort of a backdrop. I also have a business degree from the University of Chicago and I went, um, I worked for the airlines in finance and I did a lot of cost benefit analysis. So that discipline, I apply to sustainability. And in 2003, I left my last corporate job and really wanted to commit myself to sustainability. 2006, I had a baby and a toddler and we bought our first home. And the LEED rating system had just come out for homes. And LEED is an acronym for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And it's a high performance green building rating system. So I was really intrigued and we wanted to LEED certify our home. So that was 10 years ago. So I wanted to write the book to help translate LEED, to make it more accessible and approachable. And I really felt that the guidebooks didn't help you really prioritize all of your decisions. So I wanted the real story out there. What works, what doesn't work, what is too expensive and not worth it, what is completely worth it from a finance perspective. What a great idea, and really just bring it down to earth. Really get into the grass and figure it out, and just, and tell people, okay, if you only have this much money, do this, and if you have this much money, do this. Because I would say that a lot of people, in their heart and soul, want to do this in their brain, but their pocketbook doesn't allow them to do this for many reasons. But that is starting to get better because, of course, it's all supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Costs are coming down, um, but actually there are several myths about going green, and one of them that I work to dispel is that it costs too much. So that has been kind of an obstacle for people saying, well, I can't do it because I can't afford it. And that's sort of what I bring to the table is the finance piece, is that you know, one of the mistakes people make is just looking at the upfront first costs. Yes. And you really need to look at the life cycle costs. So one example is switching out to LED light bulbs. They're a little bit more money than incandescent, but over the life of the bulb, you'll save $150 to $250, depending on how much you use it. So it's the biggest financial no-brainer. Yep. Um, so you're actually saving money. So it doesn't cost you more. You're saving. And a lot of people are immediate gratification and a lot of people don't think further and it's so important to think further. Mm -hmm. It's important to think about those costs down the line from XL Energy and whatnot, lowering if you decide to go solar panels or heated floors, let's say. Mm -hmm. And those things are not so difficult when you do remodel to think about, right? Right, exactly. And you can finance it with uh, you know, if you have a home mortgage, um, you can finance it, and then often it pays for itself from day one. So if you are thinking about remodeling or building or just taking your house and looking at it closely, just grab this guide because this is a great guide just to have around. You can throw it around. It looks like it works well in a construction site. I, of course, also love the last couple of chapters because you're not only talking about the home, but you're talking about the yard mm -hmm. and the green space in the yard and the footprint of the house and the water table. And I love the last chapter where you said, here are all the mistakes we make. And that's, that transparency is wonderful. You did a great job oh, with thank that. thank you. Yeah, these are really, really good things. Mm -hmm. So if people want to pick it up, it's available everywhere, right? Yes. Are you doing it in book signings? Um, yes, I'm doing a few. Um, I'm actually going to be at the Loft Wordplay, um, May 11th and 12th. I'll have a, a booth there. Good. Um, but yeah. Because check people, my Facebook page. <laughs> okay, check your Facebook. Because people want to come and talk to you about this, too. Because people like that. They like the book, but I like, you know, let's talk about this. Yeah, right? I love talking to people about yeah. it. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Uh, you can pick up, as we mentioned, Melissa's book, Building a Sustainable Home, at Barnes & Noble or order online at Amazon. For more tips about how to, or go to a local bookstore if you have a chance to do that. And uh, for more tips about how to make your home more sustainable, check out her website and her Facebook page. And we have a link to everything on carolevin.com.